Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the Sarah of New Campaign in TNO, The Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Moklover, and we are doing, or playing as, the Great Republic of Indonesia. If you'd like to read about them, please go right ahead as I scroll down a little bit here. Now, I have said in the past, I would like to place Indonesia. I don't know how much content this nation has, and I believe that maybe Taki Senpai has played as this nation before, but let us begin with Decree 01 slash 62. With the threat of ever greater attacks on the horizon, President Sukarno cannot afford to gamble with the safety of his state or people. He must be able to take action when the rest of the government cannot or will not. The first presidential decree of the year will, through emergency amendments to the Constitution, grant him the power he needs to protect national security. Dissidents and political factions, who are, uh, who are idealists at best and communist sympathizers at worst, may squawk with indignation and fabricate rumors about the subversion of democracy, but it is no matter. President Sukarno will do what needs to be done to protect Indonesia. We're, uh, we're currently, the mods we're using are Tino, the last days of Europe. Uh, the state structure tool mod, as you can see at the top of the screen, as well as player-led peace conferences, we start with no navy. We start with no air force. We start with 23 divisions, in which most of them are just normal infantry divisions, which are 18 combat width, which are not actually too bad. In addition, we also have... What do we have here? What, uh, we have two motorized divisions, which are 18 combat width. Not too bad either. And we do have a marine division, which is not as good, but still could be a lot worse. Uh, we actually start with almost a billion in GDP, which is not bad. Even though we have no debt and no debt interest. I love Indonesia. Cool. Even though we do have a deficit, which kind of sucks. But hey, whatever. Space Race has been won. Very cool. So, I don't know what's going to happen in this campaign. But from all the other campaigns I've played in TNO, Indonesia, well, it eventually falls apart. Some way, somehow. I'm not sure who does what. But we'll see what happens. Fighting back. We're not in a crisis. Well, we start off with negative political power. We only get 0.46 every single day. More fascism. Conservative democracy. Taking out the trash. We lose political power. The purge. Oh, Borman, his successor. Ha, huh? surprise, surprise. Decree number 01 slash 62. Hata, I will do what I must. It's not going to be popular, no, not in the slightest, but it's the only way to save this country. Bong, don't you see that this decree is going, to, going against what you fought for your entire whole life? The presidential office rang sound. Sakarna lifted his eyes from the drafted amendments, and the look of disappointment shone on his face as he turned to his right-hand man. My vision was an independent, free, and secular Indonesia with or without these bickering parties. It's not as if Sakarna's criticism of Indonesian political environment was invalid, and in many ways it proved time and time again to be right, but... Both left and right, it seemed as though the political parties could only bicker, not govern, even the PNI, which claimed to support his vision for Indonesia. Time and time again, Sakarno and Hata gave their support to various coalitions only to collapse over infighting. You've, got to, you've been there yourself, Hata. Tell me. You've seen the pettiness of these politicians, said Sakarno, as he rises from his seat and circles Hata. My job was to unite the parties, Bong, not to lord over them like Stockauer or Dijon. Or Jong... or Jong... Oh, Hata, placing his hands on his shoulder. If it wasn't clear to you, I've already made up my mind. What I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going, it, what I'm doing is what you did seven years ago, unite the nation. Uh, it'll be a democracy. But one guided by the spirit of 1945, Sukarno offered his hand for Hata to shake. Hata hung his head in silent resignation. He greeted Sukarno goodbye for the evening and left him alone. A tinge of regret fills the air of the presidential office in Sukarno's mind. This was all for the good of the nation. His last work in his blood and sweat. Nothing ever could come between him and his duty. No politician, no sultan, no governor general, and no political party. The degree passes. Let's do coalition building. Despite President Sukarno's newly self-granted executive powers, he cannot run a government by himself. A coalition will have to be made with another party to ensure that a stable and effective state in these difficult times can be ensured. The obvious choice is a conservative Masyumi party. They're popular enough to give the, the government democratic legitimacy and pragmatic enough to support some of the president's more controversial plans. They do have li their limits, though, so it may be more wise to ally with the traditional Islamist Nad Nadlatul Ulama party rather than risk another governmental collapse in the obscure back rooms of the capital. President Sukarno, that's a very important decision oh, to make, and he definitely does. And right now, we only have two research slots, which we're trying to improve our computing machine, as well as just guns. Guns are nice. Guns are nice to have. Very nice. And we're trying to build up a lot more civilian factories, even though it looks like we cannot do anything because we don't have enough consumer goods, because we have a total of six cities, which is okay. Uh, the portfolio, shall we? For the coalition force, the President Sukarno must begin the arduous work of assigning duties and responsibilities to his newfound friends. Positions concerned with education, welfare, the economy, foreign policy, and various other gears in the political machine will be passed to President Sukarno's allies. There is, of course, a danger that his friends will get ahead of themselves and use their new offices to enact policy without his approval. The President cannot help but notice that they were uh, they eyed their new authority like rabid dogs. President Sukarno, however, knows how to keep dogs on a tight leash. Also, I do want to let you know we are on the cutting room floor patch G for this campaign, so if you're watching this in 2022, 
or in the second half of 2021. I just want you to know what patch we're currently on for this campaign. The Sukarno regime. Alu Akbar, Alu Akbar, Alu Akbar. I wonder how far we can get a, get away with that saying that on YouTube. Anyways, the crowd of the ch rally chant their praises, inflamed by the rhetoric of the local village head. Scattered throughout the crowd are banners of black and white adorned with stars and crescents, the all too familiar symbols of the Masumi. With God's will, we have driven the commies from our province last week. Today, your province. Tomorrow, the whole of Java. Soon, the Gallus Kafirun will be driven out of our lands. Breaking the roaring applause was the national anthem. The sound followed by makeshift makeshift flags of red and white. Roses pinned on colors of the union leaders in the front. Democracy Rakyat enters the fray. Indonesia, my homeland, where my blood will stain the earth. The municip municip municipal, municipal police steady themselves behind the barriers, separating the two crowds of front democracy uh, Rakyat and the Masumi. Spotting machetes and bamboo spears within the crowd, the lieutenant orders his men to load the rifles. Warning shots, fire warning shots disperse the bad word crowd. One, the chanting grows. Two, rocks, bottles, and bricks fly across the barriers. Three, panic. F floor, four, blood on the streets. A young laborer frantically tries to stop an imam from bleeding out. Five, silence. Indonesia, Ta Tana Erku Tana Dumpa Darku. Daraku. Sounds bloody. And changing up the curriculum. Welfare system. New infrastructure. I like infrastructure. Oh, elite only education with public education. Ooh, it's going to cost us more, but that's okay. Ooh, we get less taxable population. Child, we'll get... We have child labor. Ooh. Let's change up the curriculum. In schools around the country, children are taught uh, math, science, history, and civics in an effort to turn them into well-rounded, intelligent adults capable of reason. This must stop immediately. Through the induction, introduction of old-fashioned Islamic hardliners into the education system, President Sakarno will guide our youth down a more productive path. A new reformed curriculum will teach children the importance of patriotism, obedience to one's government, and fanatical anti-communism. After all, what are differ differential equations for the protecting the nation? What use are differential equations for protecting the nation? Cool. Taking out the trash would not, might not be bad. Wow, we get more weekly stability, but we well, minus 40% political power. Holy crud. Um, hmm. I'm not sure which one we want to do. Maybe we can do all of this before things go really badly. Uh, maybe I should go there. Maybe I should go there next. As much as I would love child labor, I, I want to get that weekly stability. It hurts our political power, but we can't even do anything with political power anyways. Taxation and liberty. Low, flat taxes. Okay. Union of the parties. Well, we could do that. Maybe we'll just jump over here first. Sicarno stood between the politicians, their hands entwined in a handshake. He stared at the camera, flinching from the flash. The newspapers got their show all right. New government formed. Olana Masumi to be, to support Bung was bound to be the next morning headline. Once the press had gotten every picture they could, Sicarno had stepped down from the stairs, laughing at the casual conversation of the party leaders. Both men dwarfed Sicarno, and yet he had the largest presence in the room. I'm glad to see that we'll be keeping stable for the next few years at least. It all depends when the old bats finally croak and the kids come rushing into the assembly. Sicarno placed his hands on the backs of the politicians. Maybe we can repurpose the lounge into a daycare. The men laughed. They walked seemingly nowhere in particular. Sakarno had a destination in mind, however, far out of sight. Sakarno still quickly changes to box a pair into a corner. Well, of course, they'll have their ideas, but luckily they won't be much of a fuss, right? Not when the collapse of our government could risk certain information from getting out. Sakarno smiled at them both. You have your goals. You know the consequences. Do not mess it up. With a slap on the back to both men, Sakarno left them, standing in the hallway, and turned back to where he came from. You better get work together or else. Taking out the trash. It seems the communist the traitors have infiltrated our go government. President Sakarno can no longer trust, assuming he ever did. The intentions of opposing politicians, thankfully, President Sakarno has a simple plan to remove the traitors and get the state back on track as quickly and smoothly as possible. A, a slight purge. Starting at the top and working downwards, President Sakarno will lead an investigation to vet the loyalists, or loyalty, of each and every member of the government, or the important ones at least. There's still the question of how the purge will be conducted, however. Is President Sakarno a heavy-handed strongman who will do what must be done, or is there room for mercy and forgiveness in this Indonesia? I love this image of this guy. Just taking out the trash. No, oh, that is so cool. Ah, we almost have some positive political power, even though we have a lot of debt. But that's okay. As long as we can spend more money, that's okay. C clearing, cleaning up the bureaucrats. I like that stability for every week. To President Sicarno's uh, imminent regret, even his own party, the PNI, can no longer be trusted. Corrupt politicians surely taking advantage of the prison's goodwill, scheme and plot in dark alleyways and smoky back rooms to destroy Indonesian society. Technocrats are pseudo-communist ways tolerated for far too long. Covertly push their red agenda under the people, subjecting them to socialist tyranny. Though it pains President Sicarno to purge his own party members, many of which he knows personally, he understands that the safety of Indonesia and the power of its president are, are, far, are worth far more than any single man. Spending cut. Can we at least produce something here? Ooh. Well, maybe we should just cut everything down then. But we need more political power anyways. I mean, it's always good to get some more political power. What do we have here? So we have this. Keys to power of the military. Compromise or purge? Purge military influence. Compromise. Uh, the SKN. 
Um. Hmm. It's Japanese dominated SKN. And the politicians. Purge are working with them at will. It'll cost 50 political power to take this button. It takes 60 days to reobtain the key. Alright, so right now. Uh, the government, the Japanese are favorable, army is favorable, and the Ulana, Ulama is uh, fully supporting national popularity. Beloved, favorable, disregarded. PKI. Okay. So it seems like things are pretty stable for now. Obviously, that's not going to last, but the purge. <clears throat> General Abdul Harris Nasution wraps the president's door to his rear with an unassuming young colonel freshly called from rural Java, carrying Nasution's briefcase and reports the young colonel stands prim and proper while the general goes through pleasantries with Scarno. As for, all for shows, and as an air of contempt surrounds the man, the colonel keeps this to himself. What brings you here, Abdul? I thought you were out in Palembang carrying out our army reforms. Well, bung, the situation in Jakarta is untenable, to say the least. Last week, two cabinet deputies were mobbed by the Reds during a tour. We can't afford to piss off the Reds even more. One more crackdown, we are dead, protested the colonel sternly. Really? Not enough? Do I need to remind you that Juanda was killed by a car bomb last month? For once, the firebrand was resigned to silence. The colonel knows what Nasution's next move is and brings out the files from the briefcase. So the colonel suddenly picks up the folders blankly labeled Operasi Tersula and opens the dossiers. It's a foolproof plan. We act now. We root the poison at the stem. So the colonel glances over the other two dossiers labeled Tersula Polary and Tersula Cabus Patin. This is huge and potentially a make or break for Sakarno. Ultimately, every branch of government will be put to scrutiny and down in Sakarno's will. The question is, does a firebrand of Indonesia lay a merciful hand to his colleagues who fought so hard for independence, or does he consolidate his own position? As your choice, Bung, you leave this room and only come back when I call. Colonel Suharto stood up, respectfully salutes the president and Nasushin, and closes the door behind him. Spare the most trusted veterans? Traders from the top to the bottom eliminate them? This is probably a bad idea. Woo! Polishing the police, huh? I mean, let's, do, let's take out the trash first, maybe? Maybe? No one person wants to believe that the first line of defense against communist terror, the valiant police officers of Indonesia, are incorruptible more than President Sukarno. But in these difficult times, no one can be considered truly innocent. To maintain the thin line between freedom and red tyranny, the police force will undergo a radical reorganization, trimming excess costs, increasing pre public presence, and ensuring all officers are loyal to Indonesia and President Sukarno. Yeah, point four six still not bad. Evening in Jakarta. A dense veil of mist and fog had descended to the streets of Jakarta, coating its streets and roads in a haze of incandescent neon lights and barely glimpsed coconut trees. Through it, an engine thrummed. A Mitsubishi automobile, bearing the anonymous license plates of the Indonesian president's luxury car, peered through the curtain, throwing its way through the jumble and tapestry that was the capital's street plan. A hand cranked uh, the side view window open. Puffs of smoke followed, joining the syrupy mix of vapors, industrial smog, and watery mist that made up Jakarta's atmosphere. You enjoying that cigar? A thick, heavy-set voice boomed from the driver's seat. Sir? Very. Under the low evening light and the segmented radiance of the street lamps, the president of Indonesia sat in the rear of the car, dressed in a cheap beige suit. A fedora sh a chaperoned his thinning hairline. You always find the, the finest stuff, don't you, Bagus? Good man, good, good name. Your parents must have been proud. I only aim to please, Bagus said, his tone full of vicious, un unctuous satisfaction, sir. He looked ahead, their destination was getting closer the, as the red gleaming letters of the Hotel Harris be beamed ahead, spattering uh, the gray mist with promises of carnal fulfillment. Bagus's foot gently pressed the brakes and with a slow, subdued screech, the car ground to a halt. Bagus got out first before opening the rear doors for the president. Hope you have fun, sir. The president answered him with a quiet nod and stepped into the hotel. Bagus saw the beige suit disappear behind the silhouette of the rotating doors. The camera should be upstairs in the president's room, entering Mitsubishi. Bagus took a fat roll of bells and started counting. The president enters a trap. Uh oh. Oh boy. Or the politicians, huh? Well, as soon as people are not are no longer favorable to us, we'll do stuff with them. So can I compromise these guys? Oh, well, would you look at that? Well then, we will further integrate the military into the government. Cleaning out the bureaucrats, I guess we'll be polishing the police. Well, I like polishing stuff, I guess. But love favorable, yeah, nothing bad. Collapse of the triumvirate. Um, SKN is Japanese, so let's compromise with them. And politicians? Alright, we're out of political power now! <laughs> okay! Maybe we should wait for that, but whatever. Let's go into the governorship is a powerful and privileged position deserved exclusively by the best and most loyal Indonesians. Unfortunately, it seems that even those hallowed offices have been occupied by snakes and rats. President Sukarno, in a display of executive power, will politely suggest that the governors of Papua, Sulawesi, and Borneo, notable, 
For the traitor's communist sympathies, retire or face more extreme measures. In their place, you appoint patriots and loyals worthy of the title of governor. Nice. And we still can't build jack squat. God dang it. Uh, what percentage are we at with construction? Because I'd like to do more. Oh, so here's the National Spirits, too. So we have the Romusha system, which is not good. It helps us a little bit, but not great. We have the Shinkyu Tai. Not good. It's okay. The Pembella Tana Air, which is honestly just doesn't look very good overall. We have a civilian budget boost, cut military austerity. We have military reassured, which is okay with less political power gain, which really is god awful. More recruitable population factor. Why, why did I pause the game? Uh, less training time, which is not bad. And we also have bureaucrats purged. I like the stability. And we also have SKN reassured, as well as politicians purged. Oh, look at that political power. Okay then. Against the grain, President Sukarno headed a long table filled with the members of the coalition. Uh, Nad. Nad. Latul. Ulama leadership discussed political strategy and geopolitics and what was, for the most part, a monotonous drill of agreement and deferment. No contradictions, challenges, or conflicts trouble the status quo. Sukarno enjoyed these meetings. He wished his own subordinates were as well behaved as Islamists. With all due respect, secularism is not in conflict with Islam, wrung out a solid solitary. Oh, Wrung out a solitary strong voice. The room, which had previously been awash with friendlier chatter, fell into a sudden silence. Heads turned towards the young, fl flustered politician. Sweet sweat ran across his forehead and left his fo left foot rapidly tapped the ground, but his words were confident and assured. Combining state and religion is a full errand. It perverts the union Islam has, has with the people and appropriates it to the state. All it serves is to do is incite tension and conflict. Learn your place, spat an older patro partocrat. Several other par party members began criticizing the dissenter as he grew increasingly frustrated. The voice slowly rose and faces reddened. Sakarna looked on in pure curiosity. He had never seen them get into such a virtual, vir virulent argument. He noticed several others, neutral party members, nervously glancing towards him for guidance concerning the current debate. He sighed. It would seem like he would have to involve himself after all. You're threatening the unity of a coalition? Take a seat, junior representative. We make concessions for the politicians. Give the young man a chance to speak, senior representative. Rally against corrupt criminals? We're going to rally against corrupt cr criminals. We don't like corrupt criminals here. And if anyone's going to be corrupt, it's going to be us. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, at least we have no interest on the debt, which is still going up. At this point, you might just cut everything down then. Even though we're already almost five minus 500 political power. <laughs> uh, at least the bill is going up. Is this going up at all? No. Wow. Oh, and, oh, here are the social stuff. So, academic basically getting worse. Vicious facilities and agriculture is pretty much the same. Poverty is getting worse. Industrial expertise is staying the same. Our industrial expertise is getting worse. Professionalism and nuclear stockpile is getting worse. Yeah, Indonesia is not a great place to be right now. So, let's go and prune the governors. Why not? Pruning. Oh. Come on. There you go. The PL... P.O.L. All right. Patrolman Wijaja put down his nightstick, lighting a cigarette as he leaned back on the seat of Pol uh, Polary headquarters. Keba Yaran Baru, his commander, Sergeant Weebowo, Wibobo, was asleep by the radio. Another night at the barracks, he thought to himself, mindlessly boring into the newspaper. The headlines were the usuals. Countless gorillas in the Javanese highlands. Advertisements for the latest Mitsubishi hot rod. Prisons of carnal speeches. It all seems as though this would be the same old day in, day out. It listened to the sound of several chugging six-tonders, followed by the lead truck's beaming headlights approach to guard posts. The said truck stop. Inches from the guard post, and an army officer exits and approaches the guard post while Sergeant Weebobo, Weebobo is awakened by the noise. What the bad word are you doing? We judge you. I'd have you. Sergeant, it's the army. They're here to search our barracks. Actually, no, we don't need to search. Sergeant, awaken your officer cadets and ask them to assemble here at the courtyard unarmed. Who's ordering? Straight from Istana Merdeka. Sergeant Weebowo, seeing the armed lieutenant, rings the alarm three times. Call blue, assemble, assembly as soon as possible. The armed bells awaken and their officer cadets assemble. Grumbling and half asleep, the cadets struggle to stay up, while the army lieutenant orders his men to disembark, armed to the teeth. Pin these two wastrels to the wall. Now, lieutenant, what the bad? Too long has the polery been infiltrated by commies and subversives. President Sakarno's orders. The cadet roars in protest, but are at an impasse. Paralyzed at what's happening. Sergeant, I offer you a choice. Either you choose whether all these cadets officers will die or not, and or you yourself will. I will not sacrifice my A shot rings out, accompanied by Wee Jiao Jiao's pleading and another officer, and another shot, followed by the panicked running of the cadet officers back into the barracks. The lieutenant calls in his aide, storm the barracks, and kill them all. Well, we're definitely going down a path here with uh, Indonesia. We're gonna have some. We're gonna have some f fun times here, and at least we're getting weekly stability, which we're going to keep as long as possible. Uniting the far-flung officers, uh, we'll probably do that. 
Yeah, I'll do that one next. The presence of Karno is a wise, intelligent man, but unfortunately can't run the military alone. As a resort of the uh, th thalassocratic nature, in Indonesia's military is divided and subdivided into hierarchy of power spread dangerously thin. Local officers are influential members of their respective communities and their loyalty to Indonesia, and Sakarno must be assured. Letters, impromptu visits, and the expansion of garrisons should be enough to reach the most pitiful among them. Strong wills inclined towards insurrection and dissidence uh, will have to be handled more thoroughly, however. Nice. The perfect day, huh? Blue skies cradled Indonesia. Gentle breezes accompanied people on their daily morning activities. Women joked as they walked to the markets. Men chatted on their way to work. President Sukarno's enamored with the day's mild beauty as any other citizen donned his sharpest shades and smartest suit. He traveled or trawled Jakarta in sort of a suitably populated insect intersection or public square. After only half an hour, he found himself speaking to a decently agitated crowd. The good weather granting granted his voice a particular ver verb so uncommon among the other politicians the people fit his words like a glove and cheered his every imperative he smiled it was an excellent day absolutely nothing could ruin it <sighs> oh yeah a government vehicle black like an unwanted cloud pulled over near the rally a man in a suit as black as a car got out and moved through the crowd easily his authority acting as a bow and a sea of people he approached the car and pulled him away from the endless adoration with a few concise words representative ali's wife has gone to the press we expect this story to break in an hour or so so carnal felt us up jump his heart jumped to his throat and then followed to his stomach. This perfect day was ruined by what would certainly be a mess of phone calls and public appearances. He glanced back at the excited mass of people eagerly awaiting him. Perhaps his day didn't need to be sullied after all. Give me a phone, I'm calling an emergency coalition meeting. I hardly see what Mr. Ali expects me to do. Now, if you'll excuse me, we must root out corruption. Corruption cannot stay here. SP holds on in Scotland. Good luck or good job, guys, I guess. Oh. Okay, so with this. That's not good, but we can't, we, no matter what happens, we can't even build, so you might as well just cut, 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 right? Even then, even if you cut, it doesn't do anything, so. Bringing the outer rings in, well, well, let's read that. Once we choose, uniting the far-flung officers. Cool, we're gonna lose more political power. Stability's not looking very good. Favorable, favorable, fully supporting. Um. Oh, well, I broke the politicians. <laughs> Bringing the outer rings in. Do you have any idea what you and that warmonger Nasushin would unleash if you do this? Bark the usually composed Hada. His energy starting to match a firebrand facing him in the presidential office. Hada, I have no choice. Military reports and Navy scouts tell me all sorts of things. USN uh, sub sub C-13 cargo drops. Australian or yeah, Australian infiltrators on the ground. These things threaten the very security of Indonesia. How the uncompromising Sakarno. Things that you wouldn't understand. Commented the president offhandedly. Hot was barely holding on to his composure. How could he say that? In his mind, Hatsa instinctively knows that the next round of purges would devastate the already fragile nation. To exert its power abroad, Jakarta depend on local charismatic leaders such as Daoud Berelia and Asia, B.W. Lapian and Sol Alswesi, and Johannes Laturharhari and Maluku. Ostensibly loyal nationalists and allies of the central government, but are unbeknownst to them, at least openly, are being marked down for purges by Sukarno's ever-centralizing administration. But the vice president relents. Any further misstep, and he's on Sukarno's chopping block. The declaration of emergency powers has created an inalienable atmosphere of paranoia and dread, permeating Indonesian society from bottom to top. He then heeds. Then almost pleadingly asked Sukarno, Bung, you have to consider mercy. It's just not possible for you to govern. And when they go, the communists come in, there's no talking with them. Sukarno holds back on marking Nasushian's order with the presidential seal. Hata has a point. Purging the governors on the outskirts would definitely be a huge gamble, and said successes will depend on whether Nasushian can deploy his forces fast enough to establish provisional governments. He then glances at the alternative plan of his own making a lighter purge that will only target regions which have deemed to be extraordinarily threats. Extraordinary threats to the national security, such as the Willy Daoud Berula in Acha. Sakuna's eyes shift to meet Hatta's once more, and he has made his decision: execute clemency and mercy. So I guess we broke this. Uh, that's not good, I guess. We still got good government support, though. So, um, I wonder if we can fix that. Oh well. Well, I don't want to do this one in a new generation, just because I don't want to. Actually, we still get more weekly stability, but political power gain. Yeah, maybe we should do more political power gain. Even 1% is not bad, but even then, political power, we might need that. But we're going to probably change up the curriculum next anyways. So then we get new teachers. Gets, gets more political power, stability, research speed, a little more cost, but better monthly priority and academic base, which is not bad. As well as anything else, taxable population. Oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. What's down here? Taxation and liberty. Oh, we even lose even more. Oh, no, we get more money. We lose more political power, though, which I don't like. Man, soon enough, our, we are spending way too much money. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We can't even build anything, though. Fighting back. Victory's unnumbered. Huh. 
Oh, it's army trees. Well, changing up the curriculum. General Gunawan sat at his desk. Behind him was an Indonesian flag in a conspicuously empty section of the wall. He was reading through the training reports of the last few months. He smiled to himself. The measures he had taken to increase the effectiveness of individual soldiers had paid off. By removing over propaganda from the curriculum, his men had gained a more realistic understanding of the warfare as a whole. As he turned to the page, he noticed two dark suited men over enter through his office door. He looked up confused. He didn't have an appointment scheduled today. Allow us to introduce ourselves, said the tallest of the two. He smiled, but his tone was monotone and grave. We are part of a special task force assembled by President Sukarno to ensure all parts of the military are operating smoothly. The shorter one said nothing and glared at Guno. Gunawan. Of course, replied Gunawan, trying not to let his panic stay in his voice. I'm happy to allow any inspection authorized by the president to proceed without interference. Very well, then, stated the tallest one. Let's not waste any time. He was surprisingly polite and benign at first. He began by going over the officer's organization, recent events, and the budget. As the inspection progressed, however, he became increasingly hostile. The drilled, he drilled the colonel on the ideological makeup of his officers. He openly denounced his recent training exercise as underestimating the power of the Indonesian military. The shortest man simply glared at Gunawan before leaving halfway through the inspection. I'm afraid, Colonel Gunawan, that my report to the president will be less than positive. The tallest man's hardening gaze dug deep into the trembling colonel's eyes. Do you understand me? Colonel Gunawan whimpered and nodded. Good, now, to bring your administrations up to code, so to say, there's going to have to be some changes. There was a knock at the door. Ah, oh, he's here already. I knew it. It wouldn't be hard to find. He opened the door and led his partner, who was holding a large portrait of Sukar President Sukarno by his side, into the room. The shortest man walked over to the conspicuously empty section of the wall and returned the president to his rightful place. The greatest enemy is... Disloyalty. Oh, I see what they're doing. Uh, uh, we'll do this focus down here eventually. Um, I'd like to at least get to 0% <laughs> stability because it's not looking good right now. But we're going to do new teachers next. Uh, simply changing up the curriculum is not enough. Some of the teachers are still corrupted by idealistic liberal principles and, most, and communist sympathies and must be replaced. A new exchange program with Saudi Arabia and the new Italian protectorate of Egypt will bring educators that are much more supportive of official policy to our schools. Some may grumble about secularism and overt politicization of education, but when the present... But when has President Sukarno ever done anything to the detriment of Indonesia? By any means necessary. President Sukarno... In close to the latest reports uh, concerning rebel activity and the suppression thereof, a diligent eye will note a decrease in effectiveness from the last month. This is not the result of incompetence or dereliction of duty, nor the lack of men or equipment. The army's performance is not to blame. The rebels have shown a great degree of intelligence and strategic adaptability. They have quickly been accustomed to the military's patrol routes and are quickly to resettle if they are adjusted. They hide among the civilian inhabiting their far-flung towns and villages within the jungle, using them as base of operations. The rebels are too deeply entrenched to root out with normal means. Their tactics have changed and so must ours. Too many potential rebels have slipped through the army's fingers due to a lack of reasonable suspicion. Too many patrols have been lost due to pervasive unwillingness to pursue the most effective means of intelligence gathering. Individual officers lack the autonomy required to quickly and effectively neutralize rebel threats. Our enemy will not fight fair. They will not engage openly obey the rules of engagement. Neither should we. General Abdul Harris Nas Nasushin. The only good communist. The leash is loose enough already. Hmm. Well, we're kind of okay with the military government. So we'll do that one. Cool. Favorable, favorable. Everyone loves us. Nah, maybe except for the politicians. <laughs> maybe except for the politicians. Yeah, that's not good. That's not a good look. Oh, oh, I guess we're done here then. Uh, we'll compromise with both. I didn't need political power, right? I really hope I don't need it. <laughs> cool. Ah, new teachers. Bringing up the next generation. Hadikusukun. Oh, my goodness. I apologize for my mispronunciations in this episode. Hadik Usum toyed with his pen as he listened to the annual report on the standing of education. It amazed him that people could come up with so many different ways to say a system was broken and a majority of the nation couldn't read. It was a matter that had long been at the top of the agenda, only to be tabled for later discussion, be it because of apathy or just because no one was quite sure what to do. Ulama has been the party to bring the issue back to the limelight, but it was not because of any newfound compassion for children, no. Ulama and Masu Masumi stood as the only two parties with the power to do much. Sukarno had banned most other parties two years prior. He made it within his own power to dismantle any party found harmful to the continuation of the nation. The two parties could not risk fighting, infighting under any circumstances, so the biggest issues would be ironed out first. Hadikusum was relieved to see the teachers step down from the podium, having made their case for what changes needed to be made to transform Indonesia into the best nation it can be. The proposals were simple. They needed more funding and standardized curriculum. The answer to the first request was simple, but they could throw a few extra rupiah towards the schools, but the matter of the curriculum was surely one to divide the coalition. The representatives from the Ulama rose to make the case, laying out the case for an education system that kept the best of both worlds, maintaining fierce patriotic views while also ensuring the right of the educators to separate religion and education. 
Hadikusum. Conjured with a proposal his party crafted. The parties could meet in the middle, both agreeing that the importance of an Indonesian identity was paramount to teach to the children, but they also be instilled with the faith to their neighbors. As you return to a seed, both parties turn to Sakarno, looking for the final call. Schools will be free and secular. Academic base. Children should be instilled with the values of the nation. Hmm. We are fascist. But there's a lot of conservative democracy here. So, academic base, it's technically going down, and I kind of want to fix that, so... We don't do, well, maybe we'll do that one. There we go. It's only minus 0.5, and we will read one more focus before maybe ending it here. New infrastructure. Uh, let's go and do fighting back, maybe. If the people are to be protected from the communist threat, they must be defeated once and for all. President Sakarno will order the finest soldiers of Indonesia, exceptionally trained and equipped, to drive the yellow-bellied red menace out of its dark mountain hideout into the light of justice. President Sakarno will not be able to lead this brave expedition, however. There is important work in the capital that demands his attention. Rest assured, though, by the... By his hand, the land will be purged of communism. And now, I must end the episode here, which is a little bit shorter than most of my episodes. But regardless, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, when we'll have a little bit more fun, and we'll have to spend a little bit more time with, with Indonesia. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great rest of your day.